American Eagle Flight 3379 approaches Raleigh Durham International Airport. Okay, can you do the descent checklist, please? In the cockpit, Captain Mike Hillis and First Officer Matthew Saylor prepare for landing. Altimeter 3031, set, cross checked. 3031, set, cross checked. These were young pilots just starting off in their career. They were looking to go work at the major airlines where the pay and benefits were substantially better. The pilots are flying a Jetstream 3201, a twin turboprop airplane designed for short flights. It's a workhorse for regional airlines like American Eagle. Turboprop engines run more efficiently at lower altitudes. They're actually more fuel efficient. So on these short haul routes, the jet stream pretty much fit that market. Flight 3379 took off at 6 p.m. from Greensboro, North Carolina. It's a 35 minute flight to Raleigh Durham Airport. Well, folks, at this time, we're about 10.8 miles from Raleigh Durham International Airport, about five minutes out, and we're about to begin our approach. Weather tonight's not very good in Raleigh. Two mile visibility because of rain and fog, and the winds are out of the north at six miles an hour. There are 18 passengers on board tonight. Among them, college student Lauren Anderson. I had been up the night before. I had stayed up all night, pulled an all-nighter, wrote a paper, and slid it under the door of my English professor that morning. So I was pretty tired. It had been a long week of finals. I was ready to get home. Eagle Flight 3379, reduced to 170, then descend and maintain 3,000. 10 miles from Raleigh Durham, Flight 3379 is cleared to begin its descent. 170, then 3,000, 3379. The flight crew reduces engine power. In a turboprop plane, the engine power and the propeller speed are controlled separately. The Jetstream 32 had no autopilot, so you were always hand flying. It was one of the most demanding airplanes on a pilot's flying skills. Descending to 3,000 feet, the crew keeps a close eye on the weather. When you get a chance, look out your window and see if you see any of that ice. Yeah, I was looking out there. I don't see anything right now. Icing can be a major threat to an aircraft. It not only increases the weight of it, but also spoils the aerodynamics over the wing. Icing isn't the only hazard facing the pilots. Eagle Flight 3379, caution, wake turbulence. You're spacing on a 727. Turn left, 190. There's a 727 landing ahead of Flight 3379, which creates a potential hazard for the jet stream. Heavy aircraft tend to generate very strong horizontal tornadoes called vortexes that come off the wingtips. If a smaller aircraft has an encounter with wake turbulence, it could be so powerful that it's beyond the control of the pilot to counteract it. Left 190, 3379. For safety, the pilots make a minor adjustment to their course. Eagle Flight 3379, Raleigh, clear to land. Wind 010 at 8. Traffic three and a half mile final at 727. Cleared to land five left, 3379. Once the Boeing 727 touches down, flight 3379 will be cleared to land. We didn't anticipate any issues. It was the same old, same old, I'd say. I probably had taken that flight three times already that year. And gear down. Gear down. 
The pilots configure the plane for landing. Flaps 20. Flaps 20. Just minutes before touchdown. Why is that ignition light on? Did we just have a flame out? The engine ignition light illuminates. Seeing the ignition light come on during approach would typically raise a concern. If combustion is interrupted for any reason, it's what pilots call a flame out or an engine failure. I'm not sure what's going on with it. If there is an engine failure, the pilots need to reconsider landing. The pilot would have to make the decision whether to continue the approach or abort the approach and see what the problem is. What do you want me to do? Are you going to continue? OK, yeah. I'm going to continue. Just back me up. Captain Hillis decides to land. All right. Let's go, Mr. Proach. But then he reverses his decision. A go-around or a missed approach would have given the pilot more time to run an engine failure checklist. When you're on final, you really don't have that much time to complete it. Set max power. Now at 1,500 feet, Captain Hillis aborts the landing. When you have an engine failure, you not only lost half your power, you lose 80% of your performance. Flight 3379 isn't climbing, and it's losing speed. Lower the nose. Lower the nose. At 1,400 feet, the plane is stalling. 